There's a new day that will come again tomorrow. This video is all about this one here, this little girl, going to be spayed. And it wasn't an easy decision, was it, Rosie? Eh? No. Because basically you're taking a healthy, happy <laughs> little dog, no worries in the world, never had a bad day in her life, into a situation where she's got to have an anaesthetic and uh, to be cut open and have her um, ovaries and a womb removed and all the problems with having an operation and potential infections and everything else. So it was a big decision for us and we debated time and time again whether to have it done. We waited for two seasons, then we got that wrong, so she went into a third season, so she's had three seasons, and she's just over two years old. And this video is all about our experience of what we did when we went to the vets with her. But she's completely happy and it's all gone really well. But um, it's that dilemma, do you take a healthy, happy dog into a situation that could cause some problems with the operation, the anaesthetic and everything else, and potential infection? and maybe something going wrong with the um, operation. So why did we have it done? Well, unfortunately, these beautiful animals only live till they're about teenagers and uh, the problems they can have in later life if they're not spayed was the decision that weighed us to have it done. So things around cancer, incontinence and various other things that can cause problems. And of course she comes in season every three months as well or so and um that's very had... uncomfortable for her as well <laughs> she would have had lots of dogs after and obviously we've got louis as well um and he doesn't know what's going on when she's in season <laughs> and we keep saying <laughs> she's your sister leave her alone but he hasn't been too bad, he hasn't been though, too he? bad. and Louis has not. been done and having a male dog's obviously a damn sight easier because everything's on the outside and Louis wasn't particularly bothered obviously he had to go in for an anaesthetic but he was in for a day straight out again didn't wear a cone didn't have to do bothered. anything with him um didn't have to have the stitches out the stitches were sealed inside and uh, he was just fine with it so it wasn't bothering but it's a cer certainly a much bigger operation for a, a female dog but it is routine as well. So anybody who's thinking of having it done, you know, it's a bit traumatic at the time for everybody. And there is that recovery period. But what you've got to remember is, is that, um, you know, the vets are very professional. They're used to doing it. They're used to telling, advising you when to have it done. Um, you know, which is why we had to delay Rosie's for a couple of weeks because um, she wasn't quite at the stage where they felt confident with her hormones and everything else that it was the right time to do it. So it is routine. But and it's, there are and thousands... it's, different, it's different with each dog as well, isn't it? With different yeah. breeds of dog. So when we was talking to the vet about Rosie, um, we was asking about it and, you know, are we making the right decision? And I'm asking the vet how many she's done in the past and if she's ever had any problems. And you actually have to sign a disclaimer as well because the dog's going under a anaesthetic for an operation. So it is worrying. But we was yeah. reassured by the vet. But we obviously what we're talking about in our experience here is about a whip it. And other breeds of dogs have different time scales and different procedures they have to go through, which we learn through this process. But obviously, you're going to be talking to a vet. And wherever you are in the world, it may vary. Wherever you are in the country, it may vary. But the information that our vet had was the latest information. It had only been out for about six months or so about the benefits and what time scales and everything for our type of dog. So it was very up to date and we did all our own research and finding out what the problems are and what the, the um, benefits are. And we still come to the conclusion, obviously, to have it done. And it was only 10 days. It's 10 days. And in that 10 day period, she just um, had short walks. She was OK. Um, and she wasn't particularly bothered about it. She didn't have to wear the cone of shame or a neck collar either because uh, Joe managed to find this. What do you call it? Is it a surgical suit? Yeah, it's a surgical suit. Well, when I rang to book Rosie in um, at the vets, um, sort of, you know, was asking advice and everything about what we needed to do and what we needed to be aware of. And actually, she, the, um, the veterinary nurse who booked us in suggested that we get a surgical suit, which we had heard of before because 
Um, I mean, some people do all sorts of um, variations on this. You could, um, I know when my dad had his male dog done, he put, <laughs> he put a pair of tights on his bottom bottom half to stop him from licking, licking it, adapted a pair of um, tights. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously this was brilliant because um, it goes over the wound, but because of the, a whip it's, um, you know, shape, actually, where um, where a chest goes out and then a tummy goes in, um, there was no, apart from when she was laid down, there was no actual material rubbing on the um, on the scar. The only thing with this is if you have to remember it's fastened at the back, so when you take her out in the garden for a wee or whatever, you need to make sure you unclip it. We nearly made this mistake a couple of times when we got times. outside and we have to unclip it quickly. But this just basically stops her getting to the wound. But she didn't even attempt to get to the wound. There was a big elastoplast put on um, on the wound when it was uh, when she came out of the vets. But that um, it, the vet had to take that off. Um, it didn't fall off by itself as I was expecting. And she hadn't licked she it and tried to pull it, it off so it wasn't a problem. To. So that's really good. The, the, I'll put the link in the description be below. Was it off Amazon? Yeah, I did buy it off Amazon in the end. Um, try not to buy too much off Amazon, really. But um, yeah, it was it it we needed it quite quickly, and um, the, the reviews were really good. Um, it's not expensive, either, was it? I think it was about twenty quid, something like that. Yeah. The other thing is, is you you could maybe get two of these. Um, because when I washed it after a few days, because obviously she sleeps in it as well, um, I had to keep my eye on her while it was washing and drying. It did dry quite quickly actually, um, but if you got two, you would you would have one to put on her while the while one was in the wash. But for Rosie, we didn't really need to because she wasn't interested in her, her um, scar at all. And the good thing about Rosie's operation was that, um, and they didn't know whether they'd be able to do this at the time when when um, the vet was chatting to us, she said that they might be able to put um, internal stitches and then glue the external bit, uh, which we were hoping because obviously that's better for the dog. The, um, they did manage to do that for Rosie, so that was brilliant. So she's had no itchy stitches. Um, that and she didn't healing. have to have the stitches out as well, of course. She didn't have to have the stitches out. Um, so she had no itchy healing stitches throughout the process plus the ones that they put inside just dissolve and the glue was has helped the um, external um, scar just completely heal and it's so little a scar we'll show you it's a, lovely we'll, we'll show, show you, you a scar in a minute um, but this new jacket um, with the inbuilt harness was really useful as well obviously we don't recommend or use collars on our whippets but a harness, the rough wear um, webmaster harness that uh, we wear, all, these two wear all the time, has a separate strap which goes underneath a belly, and obviously that was near the wound. But this one here just had the front strap, so she was unable to wear this when she was going out for a short box and going backwards and forwards from the vets. Although I had to carry her in and out the vets because she's not a fan of the vets at all. Although when the nurse brought her in, she was walking, albeit wobbly. Um, but because she had that on and she was still a little bit under the anaesthetic, um, you know, it was pulling on her back and not on her neck because obviously she was trying to get to us. Um, so, you know, we sort of had the handover with the nurse and everything and, you know, they said how well the operation had gone and how good she was. And they absolutely loved her in there, didn't they? She was a little <laughs> sweetheart. And um, they'd given her some food, but she'd at first she'd um, turn the food down and sort of not eaten it, which is not like Rosie because she does like her food. Um, and she, then she had something to eat as soon as she came on, though, didn't she? She did, but when we then got to the vets, because when I spoke to them on the phone and they said we could go and pick her up, um, they said that she 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 hadn't eaten anything anyway when we got to the vet she said when the nurse had left the room <laughs> she decided she would eat eat the food that they'd given her Sounds like um, and and i mean she'd had this was about three o'clock by this time so i mean she'd had nothing to eat since 11 o'clock in the the previous evening uh, because that's what they tell you to do is not to feed them after um i think it was nine o'clock actually yeah it's, they tell you not to feed them after 11 the previous night so we gave her some nice food um at nine o'clock 
the previous night. So it was a long time for anybody to go without food really till three o'clock the following day. Um, so that was good. We knew she was back on track, but also um, she was very, um, I mean, one of the brilliant things that happened was that when we took her in um, originally, and then we had to take her home for a couple of weeks, um, because the vet didn't think that her hormones were at the right stage. Um, the vet could see how clingy she was with us and how nervous she was. So the vet said, oh, I think she's, um, you know, a prime example of where when we do the pre-meds, you can stay with her. So actually what happened was, was that um, when we did take her for a op, we were allowed to stay with her for about 20 minutes while the, well, they did the pre-med the pre injection. That made her very woozy. So by the time we had to leave her, she knew that we were leaving her and you could tell by her face that she wasn't happy about us walking out. Um, she wasn't but, quite there though. Was but she? she wasn't quite there. She was getting really, really like under the anaesthetic. So that was lovely of our vets to suggest that. And I think if your dog is, gets separation anxiety and is very nervous at, at the vets, then it's something to ask your vet if that's going to be a possibility. Um, because it's no you know, hardship for them. In fact, it's better for them because you don't have a crying, a crying dog. Um, you know, howling and, and I don't think Rosie's particularly got anxiety when we leave her. It's just she hates. The she vets. just hates the vet, and she, she just and, and normally when we leave her, she's in the house yeah. with Louis. So she's always with one of us or with her and she's never done any difference. It's mainly she just doesn't like the vets. And I think she's picked that up from Louis. So when they've been in for checkups yeah, and things in together. the past, Louis did Louis test shit. the vets. As you'll see in this video, Louis is quite happily staying in the back of the car when uh, when we take Rosie in. Yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't <laughs> interested about getting out. And that is the only time Louis just never <laughs> wanted to get out the back of the car. He can see where we were and uh, he could see where we were and he literally turned his back on getting out so i think he thought he you know he'd, he'd done well and he was like i'm not going in there even when we get halfway down the road to the vets they know where they are don't they, they? do yeah yeah they can sense it so the the other thing that that happened on the night of when she'd had the op during the day um she was very woozy she did eat a bit of food when when we got her home uh, which is always a, a good sign with the dog, isn't it? If they've been through that, yet yeah, they're eating. Um, so we put her on the sofa, we cuddled her, we reassured her, you know, took her gently into the garden, was lifting her on and off things. And obviously for the 10 days, we was making sure that she wasn't running up the stairs or trying just to not let her stretch too much. I mean, she was stretching, she was being a whippet. She was, she's a yoga dog, so she was still stretching which she can't have been in any pain doing that anyway on the evening we carries her upstairs gets her into bed um and then about 10 minutes that she's won't settle won't settle wandering around wandering around she, she um goes for a walk about um i puts her back on the bed um and then within about three seconds <laughs> she was sick so all the food that she'd had just everywhere nice. um That's so the, just from the anesthetic just from the it. anesthetic so she'd you know and that was natural that that was just natural because of a bit of a reaction to the anaesthetic and to the stress of the day, I guess. And she hadn't had any other problems like that. And the next day she just ate and ate yeah. and ate. So she's she back yeah. on her food and back to normal. But just be aware of that. Um, you know, be somewhere where you've got towels. And I mean, fortunately, I had a, a pile of freshly laundered towels um, and I immediately could sort it out so it was fine and she didn't actually do it on the carpet so everything just went literally in the washing machine um, about five minutes after she did it and um, so I was able to clean clean up really quickly and actually once she'd been sick she settled down she had really good night's sleep Um I kept my eye on her all night um, and uh, yeah she just slept with her suit on and she was re she was really good and she ate all right the next day didn't she she was just yeah. a bit tired uh, but other than that that was it she was happy happy dog again wasn't she 
So in this video, you'll see all the clips and <laughs> uh, how she is in and out of the vets. And uh, I hope you like the video and we'll, uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Here we go. There's the scar. It's healed up really well, hasn't it? Hey, darling, you can hardly see it. Mm. There was some crusty bits on the outside, but it was actually glue where they glued it together. We well, haven't bothered with it at all, haven't you? Been a good girl, haven't you? It's beautiful. <laughs> you been a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> Pleased it's all over, though, aren't we? The results for the Soundcore Anchor waterproof speaker is, well, I don't know yet because we're filming this before the end date. So there'll be a slide in here now. I'll put a slide in there now of the winner. And if you could email me at onemanandiswhippit at gmail.com, we'll sort out the details and get it posted out to you. Thanks to everybody who entered and let's get back on with the rest of the video. Big day for Rosie today, off to the vets to be spared. Hey Rosie, so you're not having any breakfast this morning and uh, we can't really not give you any and give Louis some so he's not had any. So a bit dismayed at the moment because what's happening are you? Hey Rosie, you know something's going on don't you? You love your breakfast. Now where you're at don't you Rosie? You're not going to like this girl. Lucky for you Louis, you'll stay here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Rosie, you know where you are. You don't like the vets at all, do you? Come on. Alright, Rosie. You checking for bits. Oh, he's been feeding you. Alright. We'll, we'll go with that. Looks like you've got two weeks, Rosie. You've got a <laughs> reprieve for two weeks. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Get me out of here, she says. Mm -hmm. Rosie's fastest walk of our life to get away from the vets. <laughs> Back in the car with Louis. Hey. Eh? Two weeks time, see how we get on. Although she's in the middle of her season period, so three months ago she had her season, which is the right time to have a spade. There was a little bit of liquid in her teats, so they've just said leave it two weeks. It might always be there as some dogs are but they just want to leave it to two weeks and make sure she's not coming into season and it's the right time to do it. So she's got a reprieve of two weeks and she's very happy about that. Thank you, Rose. <laughs> Purely a precaution, but really helpful vets. Are you happy with that? Yeah, oh gosh, what a relief. <laughs> oh. But it's only a bit of liquid. It's two weeks. So they're saying that some dogs have it all the time yeah. and they just want to see if it's going to calm down a little bit and if not they'd happily do it today if we asked them to i would have in a way rather have got it out of the way today but it's just better to give her that chance yeah. for two weeks to settle down a bit and uh, we'll go from there but that was lovely the vet was so amazing explained everything it was great You're all right, all right, you do you want to go home and have your breakfast? You missed out on your breakfast, didn't you? Your breakfast. Mm. <laughs> Get me out of here. Here you go again, Rosie. Here you go again, Rosie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'll be all right. Oh. You're all set to go this time, Rosie. Mm -hmm. All set to go. Oh, Rosie. Mm -hmm. You're a little hot, but I think that's because you're anxious coming in here. And they're just taking some bloods as a precaution. Yeah, gold standard service for only Rosie. We'll just wait for them to come back. And if all that's okay and your temperature's gone down, we're going to stay for you with your anaesthetic because you don't like it in here, do you? Temperature's come down, on it, Rosie? Hey? And you've had your pre-meds and was allowed to stay with you for your pre-meds. We're just going to let you calm down a bit and then you're off in. And then we'll see you in a few hours time, girl, with a bit less of you. Mm -hmm. In your one-piece romper suit. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Rosie. Mm -hmm. Good girl, good girl. She is out. A bit drowsy, but she's all right. Thank you, Rose. Come on, then. Let's get you <laughs> back in that fastest game. She's off. Please, that's all over now, Rosie. Are you alright darling? Hey, let's get you warm. <laughs> let's get you warm. What have we done to you, eh? 
Louis was pleased to see you as well, wasn't he? Yeah, you're home now. You're home now. Yeah, Lou. Get some food. Do you want some food? Hey, do you want a treat? Do you want a treat? I bet you do, don't you? You're a lot better, aren't you? Hey, you're feeling better now, aren't you? How are you? Are you eating, drinking, and doing what you need to do outside? Just trying to keep you quiet, aren't we? Are you winking at me? Hey, darling. You're a good girl. <laughs> you enjoying that, Rosie? You enjoying that? Two days after a op, we're back again for the checkup. The vets rang us on the night of the op, did they? No, the next day. Next day to see how she was. And now we booked in just to have a checkup with her. But I think Rosie's realised where she is. <laughs> and Louis just hoping he didn't have to go in, which he doesn't. We're looking good, aren't we, Rosie? Oh, your checkup was good. They've took the dressing off, and then we need to go back in eight days' time, and then everything's all right. But everything's okay. going well. <laughs> Look at Louis. What's it's it like in there? Louis. What's it like in there? <laughs> <laughs> you won't be excited to know where you're going. No, <laughs> you're off to that vets again. Hmm? This is your last visit. This is 10 days after the operation. And if everything's okay today, which I'm sure it is, I think you're free to play again. And we don't forget you out for a run soon. Mm. Are you ready? Are you ready to go? It's all right for you. You don't have to go in, Lulu. Come on then. Here we go, Rosie. <laughs> you get to stay there, Lou. Hey, you'll be all right. Come on. Look at Louie, he stayed in there. <laughs> Look at him, I'm not going. I'm not going in there, Dad. Come on, then. <laughs> you know where you're at, don't you? <laughs> you're shaking like a good man, aren't you? Yeah, mm -hmm. Rosie. You're nearly done. You're nearly done, it's alright. You're all done, Rosie. You're all done. You've passed back to normal life, eh? Hey? Need to get you out for a run now, don't we? Hey? She's, been, you about here. she's been released from their care. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new day that will come again. See you. 